welcome to Belmont Journal, Belmont's news show and community update. I'm your host, Shundul Malik. In today's announcement, an unusual temporary position has become available to the school committee for the town of Belmont. This volunteer board is a policy setting entity for the public schools with its scope, including curriculum, budget, approving pre-administrative positions and negotiation with school unions. The appointment is until April, 2022 to serve as the remainder of the existing three-year term. The next term will be filled by a successful candidate for the school committee in Belmont's 2022 town election. If interested, please apply by November 8th on the town's website, clicking on volunteer opportunities on the homepage. For further information, please email the chair, Amy Chekoway at A-C-H-E-C-H-O-W-A-Y at belmont.k12.ma.us. In an effort to curb the spread of COVID-19, the towns of Belmont and Lexington are coming together to offer free PCR testing following Halloween. The two testing opportunities are open to town residents of Belmont and Lexington. In Belmont, the testing will happen indoors at Chenry Middle School on November 6th, that's a Saturday, from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. Appointments are highly recommended. Joining us now is Franklin Tucker, editor of Belmontonian.com. The Belmont High School and Chenry Middle School have recently experienced racial incidents. With, at the high school, it happened during an open house and in the middle school, there seems to be a recurring theme. Here we have today Franklin, who's going to shed some more light on what's happening in the schools and if the town has a response to that. Franklin? Yes, um, uh, unfortunately, uh, uh, we've had, um, uh, I would say, two incidents at two schools um, where we had uh, racially insensitive um, uh, graffiti or drawings. At the, uh, at the high school, it occurred during the uh, Saturday open house. Um, it was basically uh, a Belmont High School uh, student and a student from outside of the district. And the student from outside the district um, uh, wrote an a insensitive, uh, racist, uh, um, uh, uh, some graffiti on, in the library. It was uh, quickly caught by one of the custodians, and uh, it was, uh, no one was able to see it. But it's still uh, uh, something that you, know, you don't want to see, especially during a, a, a public event uh, such as uh, the open house. It was a, it's, a, it's a stain on, on, on everybody when, when something like this happens. Um, and, oh, but over at the Chenery is it's been an ongoing issue. Um, uh, swastikas, uh, um, um, uh, use of uh, the N word, as they say, and uh, other uh, racially uh, inspired um, uh, words have been uh, put uh, put into the, to the bathroom. Uh, this is unfortunately an ongoing incident from just a couple of years ago. I mean, uh, it was either three or four years ago, which when when a bathroom was. Um, uh, uh, defiled, and um, at the time, uh, the principal, uh, Mr. McAllister, uh, set aside time for everybody to, uh, as he said, heal for, from that incident. Um, right now, we don't know uh, if the district is going to have, um, uh, let's say, a district-wide um, uh, um, district-wide meeting on this uh, mm -hmm. to have all schools uh, discuss it. Um, there is some talk about that happening. And I think it's, if, we, if we hear anything, we will certainly um, uh, report on that. Uh, but right now, the district is allowing the principals at both schools to, uh, to um, uh, handle th these issues. Mm -hmm. Just starting at the school, and then it may or may not go town-wide. Thank you, Franklin. Right. Um, in another talking about school, the school committee, in an unusual circumstance, has a position that's become available. It's going to be temporary but it needs to be filled out very soon. And the deadline for application is November 8th. It's a yes. Thank you, November <laughs> 5th. Uh, and this is only going to be through April, 2022. What can you tell us more about this, Franklin? Well, the, the school committee has stated that this is an important uh, uh, seat to have because of everything that has been going on, COVID testing, uh, just uh, trying to get uh, the effect, the, the impact, I should say, of uh, COVID-19 on students throughout the district. So this person is going to, um, you know, uh, hold an important uh, seat of the, on the six-member committee. 
um, they're going to be doing uh, usually when, when, when we have an open seat, as Adam Dash said, we have a glob of good candidates who come in. Um, but they're going to really have to uh, whittle that down. Another term, I think that Adam said, whittle that, uh, the, the list down. And I think what they're going to do is uh, they're going to have a rubric. Uh, which uh, basically says what the qualification and expectations of people, of higher of candidates, um, uh, you know, you give them more points if they have certain, uh, you know, uh, uh, either if they have certain experience or, 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 um, or skill uh, or skill set. Um, mm -hmm. um, so um, I think they, they, they've already said that they're going to do that. I think they want to have just a few people, um, uh, uh, really the, 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 really the top level uh, people who will come, to the, what will be a lengthy one-on-one -on -one process with the uh, two committees, the uh, select board and the uh, school committee. Um, uh, as you said, it's, they want to have this done by uh, Thanksgiving. We'll see if this, if this, if they can do that. Uh, Thanksgiving is is only a, what four weeks away, less than four weeks away now. So uh, it's going to be a quick process. Um any advice uh, for candidates who might be potentially interested or people who may not have thought of this before, but this could be a good way to test the waters out? Yeah, that's right. You can uh, just fill in your name at the uh, uh, town website under um, uh, uh, committees that you'd want to join. Um, it's open to anybody over the age of 18 and who is a voter and res uh, a resident of Belmont. And that's it. Pretty, pretty low level to be a candidate for this. Mm, it's a low-hanging fruit. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> it's time for a regular segment with Joanna Zubilis, multimedia journalist for Belmont Citizen Herald and Wicked Local Belmont. Welcome, Joanna. Thank you, Chanel. In business news today, we have some uh, not so exciting news. The Starbucks, the very popular Starbucks in Belmont Center is permanently closing. Uh, do you have an update on that? I do. It's, it's permanently closing November 1st. So People who religiously went to Starbucks, you know, every day for their morning coffee or whenever they would go, this, this was their go to spot. And now it's not it's not going to be open anymore. If they really are diehard Starbucks fans, they'll have to go to another location. There's still one in Cushing Square and Star Market. Um, the decision was made according to Starbucks, uh, Starbucks representative. You know, they have. Mm -hmm their business regularly to ensure a healthy portfolio and after considered after careful consideration they determined it was best to close this location they also closed a location in Lexington Center October 10th they said it was a difficult decision you know employees will have opportunities to go to other stores but what's important for people to know is this is this is not really new news last June Starbucks announced that it would close up to 400 company-owned locations over an 18 month period um, while expanding uh, convenience led formats like curbside pickup drive through and mobile only pickup locations. And a lot of these changes you know, are due to co the COVID pandemic. Mm -hmm. um, you know, in mid March, the company closed locations and, you know, con consumer behavior changed. Mm -hmm. People, consumer behavior changed. People got used to this go to model. And that's that's what kind of led them to this decision. Um, so, you know, a lot of best Belmont Center businesses are concerned, still, still visit them, go to other, there's three other locations you can go to in the center. So okay. there's still hope for coffee lovers, at least that's yep. good news. The nor'easter that hit us earlier this week that became a bomb cyclone uh, brought some damaging winds. What and how did it impact the Belmont residents, Joanna? Belmont did get impact, even though it wasn't as bad as the South. Um, we, we did get hit hard, unfortunately, in storms like this. A lot of the older town trees do fall. And Public Works told me that they lost, we lost seven town trees. And in fact, I got a photo of one. It was literally uprooted and brought the, brought the whole grass oh it, like a carpet. It was, it was unbelievable to see that. But fortunately, there were no injuries, no, no major power outages or, or flooding. It just left a, a big mess. Even the uh, athletic signs for senior athletes were blown all over Concord Ave. Um, mm. You know, luckily, luckily, no one was hurt and we didn't get it as bad. And, and all the you know, major departments were right on site, you know, taking care of any issues. Belmont Life, Fire okay. Department, Police Department. That's, that's good to know. Yeah. Um, the Belmont High School is, has been up and running since September, and you recently yes. spoke with uh, Bill Lovallo, Belmont uh, Midland High School chairman for the project of the buildings. 
what work remains in the high school and where we are in beginning the construction of the seventh and eighth grades? Okay, so I got some news here that well, the auditorium is still not finished. Anyone who took a recent tour would see that, but it, they're hoping to have it done by Thanksgiving. The only thing that won't get done until the spring, to, to, or really the summer because of a back order for the platform is the orchestra pit. So that is going to be on hold, but they will start using the auditorium, most likely for the spring musical. You'll see it, you'll get to experience it. Um, the turf field had to be suspended. The turf field is in the back of the building and they've had drainage issues due to a lot of rain, but they're hoping to have that completed shortly after Thanksgiving and then start using it immediately. Um, the other thing that people should know is that the old high school building has been completely re removed except for the field house and pool. New foundations are being installed, piles are being driven into the ground, there'll be about one more week of pounding left for the piles, and then steel framing will start to be set, and you'll see it uh, erected uh, at the end of September, and it's expected to be completed in March, so that's when you'll see the full massing of the building uh, realized, and then the project will hopefully be completed. It's, they say it's on track to be completed and uh, for the seventh and eighth graders by the fall of 2023. Thank you so much, Joanna, for being with us here today. Many town residents have enjoyed one of the three opportunities that were offered to take a tour of the Belmont High School. Belmont Journal was there on one such tours. We estimate a total of 800 to 1,000 uh, community residents showed up for tours as of after, after today. Yeah. The students were given tours and uh, talking about their experience in the classrooms. So we can go into this classroom here. This is one of the chemistry classrooms. I, know, I don't know a lot of kids who put a bunch of stuff in there just because we don't really have time. Building committee members uh, joined the three days to answer questions of the community. We've had about 150 bicyclists come into the school every day. Uh, least, yeah. In addition now, we started adding permanent bike racks and you'll see those out. A variety of questions. A lot of questions are where is the middle school? How is it being attached to the school? Uh, so we talked about that construction. Uh, people talked about uh, the geothermal wells, they want to know about that. The auditorium. The auditorium is, is uh, within a few weeks of being done. Thanksgiving it'll be turned over completely. I understand the students will start using it in about a week. But not the stage side, just for assemblies. The pool is open. Uh, a lot of questions about how the public will get access to use the pool through uh, the rec department and that's still being developed. That. I think the whole community is excited to see this come together. I mean, the, it's, it's beautiful. It's, a, it's like a palace. The natural light that's coming through in every, you know, every corner of the building, right? I mean, I, which I love. I like all the glass. I like the fact that they can look out and they can see this beautiful claypot pond. Uh, I'm in ninth grade. I'm a freshman and it's super nice. It's personally, I think it's so much better than the old high school and everything's just so much more clean and just open. Project rooms are definitely my favorite. If you come visit like the high school anytime, you should definitely go to the project rooms. They're like a hit for students and they're super fun. And they like, there's no smart boards where you can draw. And the other thing to add, I mean, teachers are so happy too. And I'm sure it's going to impact the teaching, you know, it's like the, the person who was, to, you know, walking around, she said in the older school, the temperature was never right and it was dark. And now she seems so happy. I'm sure it will translate into her, you know, teaching. The Belmont Gallery of Art is now open on a hybrid schedule. Located in the Homer Building in the town center, its most recent exhibit, Nourish, is on display. Maribel Carvel de Salzar interviews co-directors Rebecca Richards and Adine Storer on the hybrid model that they have chosen to continue with. The new exhibit of the BGA Nourish is open, both on-site at the Homer Building and online. Can you first tell us more about the exhibit theme and who participate in it? So the theme, um, actually, the idea for the show, um, for the theme came about actually by one of our members who mentioned it um, a few years ago. 
And as the dean and I were uh, determining what our next exhibit would be several months ago, we thought, let's revisit this nourish theme. And it, it's still, it's part of the sort of the, the ongoing uh, shows that we've had that are connected to, I wanna say the human spirit while we've been addressing being um, somewhat isolated during the worst of the pandemic and so on. And we wanted artists to um, submit work that wasn't only about being nourished by food, which we have, you know, many of the pieces are food themed, but also other things that might nourish them as well. So there are artists who submitted work that's more of a, a sort of spirituality themed work. So it was really interesting to see as work came in the first few weeks um, after the call went out, most of the work was not really food themed. <laughs> uh, so then we started thinking about these other ways of, of um, presenting the art. But towards the end of the deadline, much more of the work that came in was, was beautiful, exquisite paintings um, of food. And so we do have a very large section of the exhibit, which is devoted to food. Beautiful. For the first time, the gallery reopens in person. People can go to the Homer building and enjoy the exhibit. But you also have the online option at, at virtualbga.org. Can you explain your choice? Well, when the pandemic started back in March 2020, I think it was it was by the, the fall, the next fall, we thought, what are we going to do? Because the gallery was closed in the town building. So we built this virtual space, um, which has been hosting exhibits uh, since then, uh, which has been a wonderful thing to explore and, and to have all kinds of art and even art that's in other places that we couldn't hang on the walls. But uh, so we're still doing that with this exhibit. All the pieces we accepted are in the virtual gallery. And it's just a, a select bit that Rebecca has hung in the actual gallery. Uh, so it's, it's fun to go to the virtual site and see all this art and then say, oh, wait, I can see that in person and then drop by the Homer building and get that different sense of seeing something in the real light in the three dimensions uh, hanging on the wall. <laughs> and you know, one of, one of the other um, considerations we gave to the, the, the Homer building space was proximity to that location, you know, how close the artists lived to um, the physical gallery space, because we hadn't had an in-person intake for art in a long time um yeah yes. i mean probably getting yes. close to two years actually right exactly yeah. and, 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 and talking about that is the exhibit uh hybrid here to stay i i actually dean and i have talked about this my sense is probably we'll continue to do this going forward um as a dean mentioned a, a minute ago one of the great things about the virtual space is we can accept work from all over the country, which we have had artists from, you know, the West Coast, um, from down South. We have a piece in this show, the artist is from the Minneapolis area. Um, so that's wonderful. And also the virtual space allows for visitors from all over the world to visit the space, which we have had because we have a virtual guest book and Nadine and I have seen people who have made comments from, um, from Europe, different places in Europe. So, I mean, that's that's actually been really heartening to see. While some artists might say, I want to be in the physical show, we've told them that's wonderful, but really to be in the virtual show, you'll have actually exposure to many more people than you normally would in the Belmont space. Um, that being said, I think that for some of the artists who are painters in particular, that um, when you see the work in person, a painting, you can appreciate much more the texture of the painting, the brush strokes, um, et cetera. Um, but they look beautiful in the virtual space as well. So we're hoping that people will visit the virtual gallery and if they're nearby, also come and visit the Homer building. Anything else to add? Just that we want people to come and visit the show in person and virtually. And I think they will uh, be surprised and, and enjoy what they see. And we just want the public to know that the Belmont Gallery is back, you know, full steam ahead. And we're going to just continue programming in person, virtually. <clears throat> Excuse me. And Adine, would you like to add some closing remarks? 
Uh, well, uh, you can come onto our Instagram page and see features from the show anytime. And if you're sitting at your desk and you want to just take a break, I come and visit at virtualbga.org and see a little bit of the show anytime. We're open. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Adin. Thank you, Rebecca, and all the work you're doing. Keep it Thank up. You. Have a great day. Thank you. Thank you. Belmont High School Performing Arts Company returns to its live show from the Black Box Theater. Joanna Zuvilis is here to give us an update on the story. One, two, three. Then can you all shift to Jonathan? J-Dog. Yeah. One, two, three. Then the final bow. Bring another breath in. The last live audience I performed in front of was during my freshman year Broadway night, so it's been like two years, I'd say. Exactly two years, actually, since I performed for a live audience, so it's exhilarating, really. It's really exciting, and it's really unique to be performing literally in the round. Um, and we haven't, we we did virtual shows last year, but n truly nothing compares to performing for a live audience and just the thrill and the adrenaline rush. So I'm just excited to have like an audience to interact with. It's going to be really special. I'm really excited to be performing live and also to be in like a three-quarter round theater because I think it's so fun that we're going to get to have the audience on three sides of us. We're at our first dress rehearsal right now for Broadway night. This is the first time that we've done not just a dress rehearsal in this space, a show in this room. It's the first time we've done a dress rehearsal like this in a very long time. You're about to see the very first time we've done Broadway night from the beginning to the end. To the sky, and it's open wide, you're electrified. The world becomes a fantasy, and more than you could ever be. Dreaming with your eyes wide open. Living in those shadows, you and me, we know how that goes. Today's community calendar, we are talking about books. The Belmont Public Library is inviting all writers who are feeling a writer's block. Starting in November, every Tuesday on starting November 2nd, they are offering to hold Zoom spaces from 12 to two and then three to four, where writers can come and take the challenge of writing. Registration is needed and you can do that by going to the Belmont Public Library's website. Belmont Book is welcoming back author Jeffrey Lewis for the launch of his latest book, Land of Cocaine. It'll be held on Zoom on Wednesday, November 3rd at 7 p.m. His novel is written as a sharp parable of American society addressing love, purpose, discrimination, and poverty. The author will be discussing his book with writer and journalist Alex Bean. The event is free, but you do need to register on Belmont Book's website. That's belmontbooks.com. Join Mass Audubon Habitat on Sunday, November 7th from 1 to 3 p.m. for the 24th Annual Trails Day. It's a fun way to give back by volunteering to maintain the wildlife sanctuary's healthy ecosystem. You will work alongside Habitat staff and intergenerational program leaders to update trails, clean up the community garden, remove invasive plants, and more. It's free to participate and registration is required. If you have an interest in getting a sneak peek and an intimate look of domestic life in 19th and early 20th century, join the curator of the Gibson House Museum. The event is held at Beach Street Center on Tuesday, November 9th from 1.15 to 2.15 p.m. The house served as resident to three generations of Gibson family members and their household staff between 1859 and 1954. Do call to register 
The number is 617-993-2976. Calling all musicians in town. Powers Music School is now accepting signups for the 2022 Stein Chamber Music Festival. Chamber music duos, ensembles, students, and musicians, all enthusiasts are welcome to join the celebration. You can sign up by Wednesday, December 15th, and the festival will be held on Saturday, January 29th, 2022. Concerts at 5.30 p.m. and 7 p.m. For more info, please go to Power Music School's website. Thank you for watching. I'm your host, Shonul Malik, booing off. I mean, signing off with special footage of the houses that won the Halloween house decoration contest. Have a happy and safe Halloween, and I'll see you next time. Okay, we're going in. It's a door, it's kind of spooky, I like it.